Hello boaters, welcome to Narrow Boat Journeys. Now you might be expecting a cruising video, but I think we'll do something different today. I'd like to turn the clocks back a bit, way back to 1990 when I first got my boat, and tell you a bit how, how it all happened, how it started and what led to what, and uh, here I am today. Now I've been meaning to do a video of this sort for quite some time now. Um, but I wanted to get a bit more practice in speaking to the camera because I really wasn't very good. I'm, I'm still learning. Um, also, it's, it's quite a complex subject because it happened so long ago. That's 28 years ago now. And uh, my memory's a bit hazy and there's so many details to draw in. I was going to end up with a really huge video, which was a, probably a bit beyond my capabilities at this time. Um, so I've decided to break it up possibly into several videos. I spent most of my early life in living and working in Falmouth in Cornwall and after a brief stint in the military I ended up working at a local nursing home as a, a maintenance man, gardener type thing and that's where I met my girlfriend. She was a, a nurse there and uh, one thing led to another and we ended up moving to Oxford. This is a map of the county of Cornwall. It's at the extreme southwestern corner of the UK. And here we go, zooming into Falmouth. This is where I used to live and work. And well, I don't know if it was the right decision or not to leave, but <clears throat> leave we did. And we headed 350 miles or so to Oxford. We rented a flat in Kennington, which is on the southwestern outskirts of Oxford. My girlfriend worked as a nurse in Oxford itself, and I got a job with a computer company. And I was I spent my days assembling computers. It was monumentally boring. So boring, in fact, that we had a one hour lunch break and usually most of the youngsters in that place would head to the local pub for two or three pints to, just to get us through the afternoon. But more and more I found that I was wandering up the River Thames because it was very close and you only had to walk a short way and you were past the houses and out into lovely countryside. And I had to time my walks quite carefully because we only had an hour for lunch so it was 30 minutes out then turn around and walk back again but before I knew it I discovered two boatyards on the edge of Port Meadow in Oxford the one on the left is Bossoms and on the in the center of the image there we've got Medley Boat Station and Medley Boat Station well it's gone now because in 1990 they were just winding down and closing up and they had a big fleet of hire boats and they were selling them all off I'll zoom out now so you can see Port Meadow. It's a wonderful place really. It's a huge flood plain um, and it, it reaches all the way up to Wolvercott. It's got the Thames running through it. It's common land so there's lots of horses and cattle there. I think anyone can take their animals there. And it's a lovely place to visit if you're in Oxford any time. So coming back to Medley Boat Station, I, I went home from work that evening and told my girlfriend about my discovery and uh, to her credit she was really quite enthusiastic about it so we made several visits to, to Medley Boat Station thereafter and eventually we settled upon one of the boats and with an idea towards buying it. This is where Medley Boat Station used to be. It still looks very much the same as it used to except that there was a very large floating workshop and also a large floating shop and office there as well. They've all gone now. It's just boats and, and all these boats are, are managed by Bossom's Boatyard now. So, how did we go about buying a narrow boat when we didn't have any money? <laughs> the boats themselves were priced reasonably well. Um, they were in bad condition, but relatively affordable compared to what else was around. Um, so the boat that I'm in now was £12,000 and uh, we didn't have any money. So I had to go to a finance company to get the money. Um, they wanted a 30% deposit 
which we didn't have that either. So I had to get a bank loan to, to pay the deposit and then they lent me the rest. Um, it was all quite scary stuff at the time, but it was one of the, the few times in my life when I'd been really organized and uh, things fell into place and it all happened quite effortlessly, really. Um, we were charged an exorbitant amount of interest on the loan, um, but it was a 10 year, it's a 10 year mortgage and uh, it's all paid for now. So it, it worked out okay in the end. This is the boat that we settled on. It's called Susan of Medley and it's a 48 foot coal craft. This image is taken from the, hol the hire boat holiday brochure that we were given at the time. So it shows you exactly how it was and how it was laid out as a hire boat. Lots of bunk beds, lots of sinks and it was really quite poor workmanship inside. More of that in another video though. We didn't really like the name Susan of Medley, so we changed it. Um, but I'm going to keep a bit quiet about the name that we chose, uh, at least for now. Maybe I'll reveal it one day, who knows. This picture of the boat was taken shortly after we'd bought it. I'm going to end the story here. Um, we'll continue that in part two. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.